Jesus said the fields are white already to harvest, and that is not a phrase that we use. And so today in this video, we're going to walk through this whole passage where Jesus says this and hopefully get a better understanding for what's going on. And we're going to do this really through the fashion of a verse by verse study. If you're brand new to my channel, first, I want to say welcome. Thanks for being here. And then second of all, I have been studying verse by verse through the book of John. So you're jumping kind of in the middle of a series, and that's okay. Don't go anywhere. But what I'm going to do for you is put down in the description a link to the playlist so that you can go back and really kind of catch up, listen to, or watch all the other videos, and I'd really encourage you to do that. As usual, there's a couple of things that I would love to have you grab that's going to help you get a little bit more out of this video. Grab a notebook so that you can take notes as we study together through the book of John, and hopefully you then compile some notes through the entire book. The next thing, obviously, I would encourage you to grab a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, that's okay, because the verses are going to be on the screen, but it's just nice if you have your own Bible and can study. There's also a link down in the description for a Bible app that's free. If you don't have a Bible, I'd encourage you to grab that app and put it on your phone or your tablet, and you can follow along or read any other time that you want. So that's kind of the preliminaries. We need to first go over just a little bit of a review and and figure out where we are. Remember where we are. We have been studying for the last two or three videos this interaction that Jesus has with the woman at the well. And in our last video, we learned that she was miraculously saved. She repented of her sins. She believed in Jesus. She was so excited that she ran back to the village and she started telling everybody that she knew, everybody she saw, and they began to come out to Jesus. Jesus was able to share the good news of the gospel with with them as well. And then through that, uh, we just see this, this great change in the town and in the village. Well, in the midst of this, Jesus had sent the disciples into town to get food, and they came back, and they tried to get Jesus to eat some food. And that's where we're going to pick this up, because Jesus is not at this point in time ready to eat some food. He is in full ministry mode, and we can learn some really valuable things through that. So we're going to go to, to John chapter 4, and today we're going to look at verses 31 through uh, 38 as we kind of pick this up there. And it says, uh, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And this this kind of is is humorous to me, but encouraging to me because the disciples had seen Jesus many times say things that were kind of hidden, and you'd think by now they would be looking for that, but they weren't. They were confused. And then I, I'm reminded, well, how many times do we miss things that Jesus is trying to teach us too? So anyway, we keep going here. Uh, it says in verse 34, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say... There are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. There are some really good truths here. The first observation I have for you is that obedience to do God's will is fulfillment. Jesus is trying to get the disciples to understand that right now he does not need physical food. He he, is doing the will of God, and that's fulfillment enough for him. So really what what we're seeing as we read this is that when the disciples come back, they're they have food. They've been hungry. They assume Jesus is hungry, and and they're ready to eat. And Jesus sees this really neat teaching opportunity. And what I love about Jesus when you study through the Gospels is he takes, he, he's so wise, obviously, because he is God. He sees these opportunities so much better than I do, but he takes these opportunities to teach, and this is this is what that is. They're thinking only of their own comfort, and I don't want you to miss that. I don't want you to miss that as we're teaching through here. The disciples come to Jesus thinking of one thing in this moment, their own comfort. 
Yet in this moment, if you remember from the other videos, there's a massive thing going on here. There are many people coming to know Christ. There's a lot of ministry that's happening here. Jesus wants to make sure he doesn't miss an opportunity to teach the disciples. He knows that he can get their attention right now, and he tells them that his food is to do the will of him who sent me. And the disciples don't understand, as we said already. They think maybe somebody brought him food. They're just not grasping what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is trying to help them understand that to do God's will is fulfillment. That's a fulfilling thing in our lives when we are obediently living out God's will. It brings joy. It brings a contentment to our lives, and Jesus is trying to help them understand that. It also seems that he's trying to get them to understand that doing the will of the Father is the only reason we exist. He he says, I, I don't need food right now. I have another food. Of course, we know that Jesus needed food. He needed to eat. But in that moment, his own comfort, the comfort of the disciples, that what, what they were wanting for their life was not important. The reason they exist, the reason you and I exist, is to do the will of the Father, to live out those good things that he's put in our path. If we go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we see here that this idea of doing the will of the Lord, doing these good works, is highly important because if you read the first two verses before Uh, Ephesians 2.10, it says, it talks about our salvation, and we can really begin to understand we are saved to do the will of the Father. And the disciples just weren't fully understanding this idea of being saved to do the will of the Father. Let me challenge you with this question. What are some ways that you are living out and obeying the will of the Father? And to take that another step, Maybe just take some time to think about, or if you're with a friend watching this, have this discussion about what are the times, what are some specific times that you've been able to set aside your own comfort and do God's will and put him first and and live in obedience to him? And what are some of the blessings you've seen from that? The second observation that I see here comes from verses 35 and 36, and it's that we have a role in God's redemptive plan. And this is so incredible to me that me and my brokenness and my messed up life, God has chosen that I get to have a role in God's redemptive plan. The disciples who came from all kinds of backgrounds, who really, as as we understand if you study scripture, they were a mess themselves, yet God chooses to use them, and he chooses to use you and I in his redemptive plan. That makes no sense to me. Seems like there are better ways to do it, but but I am so thrilled that God gives me the opportunity to be involved in that. So what we see here is an agricultural reference when he begins to talk about the harvest, and the disciples would have understood that very quickly because of this being a uh, an agricultural society, and so they understood very clearly this idea of I'm of I sow seed and then I have to wait for harvest. And it wasn't yet harvest time for them when Jesus says this to them. So this is probably confusing to them because he says, don't you say that the harvest isn't here yet, right? The harvest is coming later, but I say it's here now. Jesus is telling them something that's incredibly important to you and I, and it's this, stop waiting. Stop waiting. Stop making excuses. Stop saying that, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in obedience to God's will later. I'm going to reach people for Christ later. I'm going to impact people and just excuse after excuse that you and I can come up with. And Jesus is saying, no, it's now. Look around at what's going on. Look at the people around you and their need for God. Now is the time of harvest. Now is the time that we need to be working. Jesus says here, and I, and I really like this phrase, he says, lift up your eyes when he talks to the disciples. And, and I think this would have been hard for them. This would have been one of those situations where they would have probably felt a little embarrassed because they're worried about whatever they have in their hands for food, and they're trying to get him to eat. And he says, quit looking at your own life. Quit looking at your own desires and what you have in your hands and look around you. Look at what's going on. The fields are white unto harvest. Lift up your eyes. Stop worrying 
about your own life. You and I need to stop worrying about our own life. We need to stop worrying about physical things. And we need to see the people around us that need Christ. And we need to begin to order our lives and our desires and our priorities around that because it's time for harvest. And this is why we're here. So you and I need to understand this as well. We need to understand that we need to lift up our eyes, look around, and you and I are to go into the harvest field. We have a role in God's redemptive plan. If we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says this. He says, "That that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us, We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Paul is telling us in this passage that God has a role for us in his redemptive plan. We are his ambassadors. We are his mouthpiece. And if we are not participating actively in bringing people to Christ, then we are failing. We are not living out and doing God's will. And it brings an emptiness in our lives. If we're struggling, if we're looking for contentment, we need to go do God's will and begin to share the gospel with people. But Jesus isn't done here. In verse 38, he gives us one more thing that's that's really an incredible encouragement to us. And it teaches us this. It teaches us that God does the work and we enjoy the blessing. What does he say? He says, I'm asking you to just go and, and harvest. That's what I'm asking you to do. Somebody else has planted, and we have a role in planting that seed, by the way. But here's what we know and understand, and even in our society, not being, if you don't live in an agricultural area, we do, uh, but here's what we know. We know that when the farmer plants the seed, or when you go out to your garden and you plant the seed, there's nothing else that you can do that's within your control until you harvest. Sure, you can water, you can pull the weeds, and really, that's a great illustration. Those are all things that we can do as believers when we're trying to bring somebody to Christ. But the reality is once the seed is planted, we have no control over what happens to that plant. That plant can grow or that plant can die. And God is the one that grows the plant in your garden. God is the one that grows the corn in the fields. He's the one that grows the seed. And He, Jesus is telling the disciples here, somebody plants, I do the work. I grow the seed. And now at this moment, I'm just asking you, to go and harvest. So we we can understand that in our lives, we just simply need to be obedient. Go plant the seed and then harvest when that opportunity comes along. And it's okay if you're harvesting someone else's seed that's been planted. Jesus is saying, you right now are going into the field and harvesting someone else's seed. Somebody else has planted the seed of the gospel. We have to remember that when we're planting the seed of the gospel, but we don't see somebody repent and believe that down the road, somebody else might come into their life and they might have an opportunity to harvest a seed that we planted, God grew. Knowing that really this whole redemptive thing is God's doing. Salvation is God's. He does it all. We just get to play a part in that plan. And that's an incredible thing when we realize that really we're just kind of along for the ride. And when we begin to realize that we're just along for the ride, it should make it much easier for you and I to get into the world and find people that, that need Christ and share the good news of the gospel with them. Jesus is saying here that there's literally no reason that every Christian should not be in the harvest field because the work is God's. We just need to be obedient. Well, guys, that is John chapter 4, verses 31 through 38. I hope that you enjoyed that study. And if you are enjoying this study, please let me know in the comments. That's so encouraging for me to hear someone say, here's what I am learning, or here's why I have enjoyed this. Or if there's something that God challenged you with from this video, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I also really want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. My analytics tell me that most of the people who watch my videos are not subscribers. So please hit the subscribe button and then click the notification bell because I try to upload videos almost every week and I don't want you to miss any of them. So please subscribe, hit the bell, and then as always, 
just clicking that like button is a big deal. It's a great way to help my channel because YouTube knows that somebody likes this video and somebody else, else might like this video too. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.